I needed to make an extension for the round dining table we have in the kitchen and I already marked the arc that I needed to cut out of this used piece of plywood to make it fit around the table and then I wanted to use that arc to actually extend that again so that the extension was also round and to make those fit flat together I actually passed them over the jointer to get the edge nice and flat for gluing them together. This is such an oddball project it wasn't really worth filming it but I set up an iPad with some time lapse software on it and so now I'm just kind of adding commentary to all those time lapses that I shot. I'm using a dowel jig to help reinforce the joint between those two pieces and also help align it. I'm using a couple of 3 8 inch dowels towards the edge and then some half inch dowels closer to the middle to really help stiffen that up. Uh, I'm just using my cheap little cordless drill in there and shortly after that actually I ran out of battery. And after that I switched to my Ryobi Makita Franken drill which isn't any better actually but it's got a charged battery so that's why I'm using that one. And now checking that all the holes are actually of sufficient depth and I found a couple of them were not deep enough so I just drilled those out a little bit more. And now I'm getting the dowels in there. I'm gluing them into the smaller piece first and then figuring out what length of half inch dowels I need by measuring all the holes and cutting those to length and then tapering them on the belt sander. And I like to sand them a little bit because any old surface has usually got a bit of grime on it and with a bit of sanding you get better glue adhesion. And now putting glue in the holes and then glue along the edge of the board and then glue onto the dowels of the other piece and along the edge of that too and then I can mate them together and I'm using a big rubber mallet to press them together and then two clamps back to back because I didn't have long enough clamps in this shop. And now I'm digging out the leg for a table extension I actually built in 2008 for my old dining table but we're not using that table anymore and I needed to make that a tiny bit shorter to fit on this one. And then the bracket I've got for mounting that to the table, I'm figuring instead of always screwing it to the bottom of the plywood, I should actually attach it with hinges. So I've got some piano hinge and I'm cutting some short lengths out of that because I don't have enough to go for the whole length across it. And then I needed to find some screws to attach those hinges with. And in this shop, I don't have quite the same assortment of screws. So I'm just sort of going through my random screws, but eventually I found some screws that were just about the right length. Although it turns out they were actually made out of mild steel, so I stripped a lot of screw heads on them. And also adding some screws to where this bracket now attaches, because I moved it down by about a centimeter to make it fit for the right height. And I want to have some kind of diagonal support for this thing so that it folds in. And I have a big chunk of hardwood that I'm just cutting a strip off of, and I realized I should possibly make that a bit wider on the end. So I cut a curve on it on the end with a bandsaw so that the... Uh, stick gets a little bit wider towards the end. You can see that here on the jointer and cutting the end square. And unfortunately I didn't re-aim the camera there so I'm not sure what I was doing. Um, hmm. And now getting back to attaching that. I think I attached a piece of plywood to that there. Again I'm a little bit out of frame because I wasn't paying attention to where I had the camera aimed. And now sanding all the corners and edges of this diagonal brace. I used a belt sander for odd jobs like that a lot. And next I grabbed a short piece of 2x4 for making the pieces that attach to the main part of the table. Turns out that was a little bit crooked so it was a bit of work on the jointer. And now I cut that into two halves and then cutting the ends square into the same length. And at this point I decided I should have the air cleaner on because I made all that dust. Now those pieces that attach to the main table actually need a step cut into the end because the uh, tabletop on the main table is about 36 millimeters thick whereas this thing is only 19 millimeters thick. So I cut that step with a table saw and then cleaning it up with a bandsaw to cut that step square and I decided to bevel the other end and now rounding the corners a little bit with a small hand plane. I think at this point the glue is sufficiently dry that I can manipulate that top so I'm cutting the corners a bit round to make that a continuous curve and then using a small hand plane to bevel and round the edge a little bit and then sanding it by hand but uh, then I decided that that wasn't enough and I just put on the big belt sander which made that curve much smoother. Now going over the edges again with a piece of sandpaper and cleaning up the glue squeeze out on the table and now figuring out where I'm going to mount everything. I want the leg not to stick out too far beyond the table when it's folded down 
So there I decided where I'm going to put the hinges and I made a little guide so that I could drill not too deep because I don't want to drill through the table and now putting the screws in and these turned out to be very soft screws. I had to take one of them out with a vice grip because I totally stripped ahead and I ended up crushing the screw with a vice grip. This is when I realized they were made out of mild steel. But it's like, well, they will hold and this is getting rid of them. I'm going to toss out the rest of those screws. And now figuring out where that brace is going to mount um, and rounding it some more and cutting it to length and sanding it some more. And you can see there's a piece of plywood mounted to it just bottom right on the uh, frame there. Um, that plywood makes it wider so I can put more hinge on there and cutting another piece of the piano hinge to just the right length. And it only had two holes in it after I cut it. So I drilled a bunch more holes into that hinge so I could have more mounting points on it. And now pre-drilling holes for the screws. Uh, here's marking, then drilling. I could call that drilling pilot holes, but the advantage of calling it pre-drilling is it really annoys pedantic people. And now adding a couple of screws that reinforce that glue joint just for good measure. And now figuring out where it's going to go and how this is going to work out. So here I've worked out where I need to join with a leg and I'm going to put a dowel into this piece here and glue that in and that dowel is going to stick out and go into a hole on the leg. I'm just gluing the dowel in right here and then working out where that dowel needs to go in the hole in the leg and drilling that. And I'm just using a drill guide to line up that hole and get it square. It would have maybe been better to take it off and put it on the drill press, but I just didn't feel like taking those screws out again. Um, now I cut a slight relief cut in there so that the brace would fit better against the uh, mount for the main leg. And now I've decided where it's going to go and pre-drilling the holes for that and then screwing that part on. And conveniently, that pr the way it's mounted, it kind of presses the dowel into the leg, so I don't need any way of locking that in there. So next I'm working out where the screw holes are gonna go for the pieces that join up with the rest of the table, and I'm drilling those on the drill press, and once again, I'm slightly out of frame as I'm doing this. Uh, more drilling and countersinking, and rounding the edges a little bit with a small hand plane. Not sure how many holes I'm drilling there. And now I'm looking for a nut driver thingy that goes on the end of a drill because I want to use that to cut a thread into those things so I can put the mounting screws into those. I'm pretty sure I brought that into the shop, but I just could not find it. Looking, 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 a lot of time is wasted that way, or at least it seems like it's forever. In the grand scheme of things, I guess it's less than 10% of the project time, but it's just so frustrating looking for stuff. Eventually, I gave up and I decided to just use a nut driver by hand to tap those holes. So those holes are essentially to have a spare place to put the mounting screws when the top is not mounted onto the table. And now I'm screwing those long things on there just with drywall screws. But unfortunately, they weren't quite long enough to go significantly past the joint in the wood, so I decided I should reinforce that a bit. So I made two shorter pieces of wood that just span across the joint to help stiffen that up. I think I'm drilling right there. Now I'm countersinking, smoothing edges a bit, cutting the corners round, sanding it a little bit, and got some screws ready. And I don't know what I'm doing right there, but there I'm finally screwing those in. So next thing, I took the table extension upstairs to actually try it on the round dining table, and I brought it back and then I decided to sand it in a few spots just to make it fit against the round table a little bit better. And then I had an idea for locking the support flat against the bottom of the table just by putting a little pan head screw against that support which fits into a hole on the leg itself so that it snaps in place and stays flat against it when the extension is put away. And now I'm sanding the edges and corners smooth and round so that I can next put some varnish onto the areas that I've freshly exposed. The top of the table is still finished. In fact, this piece of plywood used to be a table extension that I used at my old place when I invited lots of people. Before that, it was part of some cabinet that I actually bought very cheap at a surplus sale, specifically for the plywood. And now I'm using it again, so this is the third usage that this piece of plywood has got. And here's applying varnish to all the edges. And I'm done with it, putting the varnish away, the rest of it. And finally, cleaning up some of the clutter in the workshop. 
and I was just adding voiceovers to a time lapse when I realized this video kind of needs a conclusion. So here is the extension on the table braced in right here. This part just kind of pushes itself against there. Um, there is a screw right here which fits into this thing here and that latches the whole table up against the extension when I'm putting it away and it attaches with these big quarter inch wood screws which I do need a nut driver to get on and off like this and the holes for these I just tap these with a homemade wood thread tap and that makes the screws relatively easy to get in so that I can actually kind of twist it most of the way in there by hand So they're on table on its own, comfortably seats 7, 8 is a squeeze. With this extension I figure 10 should be comfortable, 11 would be a bit of a squeeze.